Welcome to the channel where we talk crypto, trading, and technical analysis. My name is Michael, hope you're doing really well. Now, this video here, we are gonna be talking about market psychology, sentiment, the bear market, where I do think we are at in this particular market phase. Now, if you are watching this, it is good news because it does appear that the sentiment is dead. People are leaving the space, engagement is down, views are down, likes are down, comments are down, everything is just kind of dropping off in the space. And maybe my content's just rubbish, I don't know, you tell me, but it does seem to be pretty consistent across the board with cryptocurrency, uh, YouTube channels, social media accounts, all that kind of thing. So yeah, once again, it is, it is an important market to be paying attention to because as we do dive into some market psychology, market phases, it is a key part of the phase. It does show that we are closer to a bottom, then gonna be experiencing another huge dump or collapse. So we have a lot to cover in this video. We're gonna be talking about this chart here, just looking at a few key markers of this bear market. Also talking about some news and events that have taken place throughout the bear market and what we're looking at. I have some charts to go through as well as I always do. We'll start out with the Wall Street cheat sheet, which is a good indicator of psychology. It is sometimes difficult to pinpoint where we are, uh, but I do think we're getting very close to pinpointing exactly where we are in this, which we'll be covering, and also talking about trading as well. It's not been an easy market to trade by any stretch, but bull markets are much easier, which I'm gonna be talking about as well. So we will start out with this chart here, just talking about bull markets and bear markets, and what does typically take place in the space as adoption does pick up, as hype and enthusiasm is high, and uh, just starting out with the bull market overall, uh, we can see that when the markets are running hot, a lot of interest and excitement, any bit of good news that does come out does really pump the price up very rapidly, quickly, and of course everyone's excited and the prices just do shoot to levels that nobody thought was possible. So in the bull market specifically, we obviously had a lot of adoption, we had MicroStrategy, Tesla, Kathy Wood, all those people, uh, you know, obviously buying up Bitcoin, giving a lot of hope and optimism to the space. Uh, but when we, do, when we do get closer to tops in the market, there's still good news coming out, but the price isn't affected as much as it was previously. So you can see here, I've got worldwide crypto adoption up 880%. Now this news came out October, November of last year. And in my opinion, this news should have really pumped prices up to levels, ridiculously high levels, if the bull market was still healthy and alive to really see that over the top nature. Now it didn't. And that was a key telltale sign of where the market was at. And there's a lot of other good news that did come out right around that time, which was just unable to push the price up. Now, this is really important to be keeping in mind because the same thing is true in reverse. So this year, you can see that we've had a lot of uh, obviously collapses and failures take place, which is very typical of a bear market, both in cryptocurrency and also traditional markets. But if we do pay attention to what the price is actually doing, when we're getting this bearish news, you can see that the effect is just less and less on the market. So of course, we had the Terra Luna UST collapse. The price did get crushed very hard. Then we had Celsius and Voyager continuing to see weakness in the market. Three hours, three hours capital, the price continued to slide. And now we've had the second largest exchange in the world go under. If we look at what the price is actually doing, it's been unable to go much below the lows from June, uh, You know, especially when we're looking at the total market cap. And some markets are even putting in higher lows despite some of the worst news, in my opinion, uh, since this bear market has been underway. So perhaps we are starting to see the tides turn in terms of the macro picture, the news coming out. And also, if you just do pull up a few articles, there's no shortage of articles saying that crypto is dead, it's over. Uh, you know, There's no recovering from this, and which is always the case at the end of every bear market. And once again, this is also true of the stock market. It's well. It's not just in cryptocurrency that we see the news that the market's dead and it's never going to recover. So that's not to say that the market can't go lower because of course it can. Nobody knows the future for sure, but just to pinpoint a few key things that are taking place in the market right now, what the price is actually saying, uh, you know, it is very interesting to note where we currently are. So that brings us over to the Wall Street cheat sheet, try and say that quickly a few times. And uh, as we can start to look at this chart here, thinking about the psychology of the market, noticing that the sentiment is kind of dying off, people are leaving the space, there's not a lot of interest. I do think it is getting us very close to this depression stage in the market, uh, You know, maybe just before the depression or around the depression. I do believe the anger is gone. Uh, I think the FTX collapse really did spark off most of that anger or get rid of all of that anger. And now here we are post anger into this phase where people are just losing interest and exiting the space. So if we are in fact, post anger heading into the depression, if we're not already in the depression, we can just start to map out what we can expect to see by the way of the price chart. And just to kind of take it one step back, we can see we had the uh, market blow off top, then we had the complacency and just kind of flipping back and forth. You can see that we've had somewhat of a capitulation in June. And I still do stand that this was the main capitulation in the bear market. I don't think we're getting another huge capitulation coming up, but of course, if it does happen, we just have to you know take that as it does come. Uh, but nevertheless, if we have seen this anger because of the FTX debacle, Although price may creep lower, uh, I do believe that 
we are heading into the final stages of the bear market. If we haven't already seen it, uh, as you can see by you know this general market psychology cheat sheet that uh, we're looking at on the screen at the moment. So that is an interesting thing just to be tying back into the market. You can obviously layer this over stock markets as well. Uh, any markets where you do have a chart and you want to do some big picture analysis to see the kind of psychology going on at the time. What you can also see in this cheat sheet, which is obviously derived from actual analysis, mapping markets, uh, and looking at a broad overlay for what the market typically does at, at similar stages, you can see that the volatility and sentiment does drop off. You can see the ranges get much smaller. And that does lead us to the fact that trading has been rather difficult lately because the ranges are getting smaller. There's less volatility around, but that just comes part and parcel with trading. And at least in my opinion, it helps me really tune up my profit taking zones, knowing when I need to be more nimble as opposed to just letting trades run for longer. And if you do recall anybody that's been around for a year now, do let me know if you've been watching me for at least a year. Uh, you will recall that it was in December of last year that I pointed out the fact that it's not an investor's market anymore. It is now a trader's market. It was actually in this bar here in December. Uh, we got that initial breakdown and I spoke very vocally about calling this a trader's market, not an investor's market. And purely what I was getting at with that, it's the time to be getting more nimble in the markets, not just holding on for longer runs. And it's essentially, that's what we have seen. We've only been seeing short-lived moves to the upside, longer moves to the downside. But overall, the markets just have been chopping around much more than they do in bull markets. Bull markets are much cleaner moves, typically speaking. And I'm going to get to this chart in a moment because obviously we are going to be seeing another bull market coming up. Uh, but just looking at where we have been in the bear market, uh, it is just a matter of being more nimble, taking that to, into consideration. And like I've been tweeting about, talking about in videos, I'm just not letting, I'm just not holding on, expecting any trades to be running for a long time, especially not on the long side of the market. And of course, when the markets do fall, typically they don't fall for very long. They're just savage sell-offs that do obviously halt very quickly uh, before kind of ranging around again after making, meeting that level of support until it decides what it wants to do next. So while most people are leaving the space thinking I'm just gonna come back to it when it's hot again, when everyone in the office is talking about cryptocurrency, that's when I'm gonna start trading again. In my opinion, these are the most important times to still be sticking around the markets because this is where we earn our stripes essentially. We learn how to manage the tough times and then we're prepared for when the good times do come along. Whereas if you do just think about the people that come back later in the space or even the new people that do come along uh, in the next bull market cycle, they're gonna be chasing their tail trying to figure out if they should be buying, selling, how soon to be taking profit and more often than not, they're the difficult times for the new people, whereas the seasoned guys from the last season and the one before are well prepared to be holding onto those trades a little bit longer and riding those bigger swings. So while we have been in a period of needing to be much more nimble in the markets, and just to kind of display what I mean, even just with this TIA GAN swing indicator, as I always show, uh, we can just see that the trends have been chopping and changing far more frequently. So I just turn on that show trend. You can see the market's been going from uptrend to downtrend very, very frequently. Now these this indicator does not repaint once the trend is set or once the the uh, swings are formed, they don't change for history. But just looking at the trend alone by this one indicator, you can use your own indicator if you want, you will see that the trends have been chopping and changing far more frequently. You can even put in a moving average on a relatively short time period, and you can obviously see how the lines and the moving averages have also been all over the place, by the way, some shorter term time frames. But when we do get to something like an actual established bull market, uh, we do get much cleaner trends and easier periods in the market. But it's only those that have stuck around in the bear markets and the tough times, in my opinion, that are really gonna be able to take advantage of the easier times ahead. So what I've got here is just the 2020, 2021 bull market. And you can really see, you could just throw a dart at anything and hold on. And essentially the market would eventually go up and make some profits. But just to really display it with a little bit more kind of nuance and making the most out of those markets. Once again, I do have the indicator on, but you can just really see how after any, basically any breakout in the market, the price did just trend up very cleanly, higher lows. Obviously bit of rest periods always do take place, but then there's just periods of higher lows. And uh, you know, once again, breakouts, higher lows, just very straightforward forward and simple. But of course, nothing seems that simple at the time, but that is the way it goes more often than not. And uh, it is just a matter of really being around prepared for these times when they do come, because obviously there is going to be another bull market. Uh, markets are going to trend well again. And it's just a matter of, you know, being really sticking around through the tough times for these easy times to come along. Also to show a bit of comparison between what the trends do in the bull markets and bear markets, uh, it should be no surprise to see that when we do get the uh, clean bull markets come along, the trends just do get a lot more established, much easier to trade, much easier to hold in, and obviously make make those quick gains to the upside. And there's much less work involved as well in bull markets or in clean trends, uh, because obviously the price is just moving in one direction uh, more than it's moving in the other direction, leading us leading to those higher bottoms and you know cleaner trends. Now that does beg the question for, when are we gonna be seeing the easy times again? We want some clean trends as opposed to these you know short moves where the traders have to be really nimble, having tight profit targets, all that kind of thing. We wanna be seeing those clean trends, straight lines up of course, but uh, if we're going off history, if history is anything to go off, uh, Typically, there will have to be a period of accumulation. Now, accumulation can happen in a relatively wide range, especially when we're
are looking at something like a big picture chart and uh, this is obviously a monthly chart here and we may have already been starting some accumulation in this period here but we're not going to know until we do get those overhead breakouts and the macro confirmation signals which I've shared on this channel a number of times check out the macro playlist to really know those key signals which is going to be flipping this bear market to a bull market and we haven't seen any of those signals yet we do have to see some breakouts overhead and we have to see some higher lows on the macro charts and once again it is all fun to speculate market bottoms and uh, maybe we are closer to a bottom but it is going to be unconfirmed until we can get those breakouts and higher lows on the macro charts which we haven't seen so obviously there's a very high chance we are going to be going through this depression period for a little bit longer with some smaller ranges it's going to be a matter of being more nimble at least in my opinion but once again sticking through it we will be seeing those good, good times once again uh, once we get those overhead breakouts and the bull market begins so i hope you enjoyed the broader market discussion where we talked about more than just some short-term trading if you did let me know i'll do more of these types of discussions as well moving forward now if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to our free newsletter at tiacrypto.com i uh, hope you're staying happy healthy and well and until next time i'll catch you then